guys, Mike here from Applied Engineering and Design, and uh, this tutorial is going to be an introduction to Rhino Cam, a uh, computer aided manufacturing plugin that lives uh, right inside of Rhino. Uh, it allows you to write tool paths and uh, output G code to machine things on various uh, CNC controllers or CNC uh, production machines. So. Uh, we this is left off basically from our last tutorial where we set up a template. Um, currently open right now is the inch template we created in the last tutorial. As you can see in the layers dialog over here, we have curved surfaces, reference, and lights, um, which is what we set up before. And what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and go over the basics of Rhino Cam and then import a part that I've already created. Uh, and go ahead and write some tool paths for it so you can kind of see how RhinoCam works uh, with an existing part. Um, in a future tutorial, we're going to go ahead and uh, create a part from scratch, uh, write some tool paths, uh, maybe even 3D print it, and then uh, produce it out in a, out of aluminum or something we can machine it out of. Um, so let's go ahead and get started here. Um, once you install the plugin uh, from Mechsoft, uh, it should show up in your menu system up here at the top. Uh, as you can see, I have Rhino Cam 2015 right at the top here. So we're gonna go ahead and click it and come down to mill. Um, what happens right here is that it pops up to uh, windows inside of Rhino here. Uh, basically on the left hand side, you have the machining browser and on the right side there is machining objects, which is your tools, regions, features, and knowledge bases. Uh, what we're going to do to sort of clean up the window here is uh, I like to work in perspective um, while I'm doing toolpaths. So uh, I'm also going to go ahead and take the machining objects and sort of dock it at the bottom here, sort of give me a little bit more real estate on my screen. And I'm going to shrink it down for right now. Um, we don't we don't really need to uh, pull it up right at the moment. So. Um, Inside of Rhino, uh, it's essentially set up with all of your operations, uh, and it's split between your programming and your simulation here. And uh, under programming, you have your machine tool setup, your post-processor options, uh, any sort of setup options, which if you look, you have your orient part, your uh, CSYS setup, and your uh, rotate table setup. And uh, for four axis operations, we'll get into those in a future tutorial. Um, under stock, you have the ability to oh, set up a box stock, a part box stock, cylinder stock, part cylinder stock, part offset, extruded stock, stock from selection, export the stock as an STL, or delete the stock completely. Um, we'll go over a lot of those options in, the in a future tutorial as well, where we can really dive in deep to the options. Um, under align, you have align stock and set your world coordinate system. And your material here, you can open that up and you can see that we can set our material uh, to any types of uh, materials that are loaded up and gives you a texture as well. Um, it sort of gives you some setup uh, for your feeds and speeds. Your work zero here sets a coordinate zero. Uh, under your two axis, you have all your two axis operations such as facing, pocketing, and uh, profiling. Under three axis advanced here, we have some horizontal roughing, uh, re-roughing, parallel finishing, horizontal finishing, and various different three axis operations. Under four axis, we have several options for four axis, and we have several options for five axis machining as well. Um, these options may or may not be available based on what level of Rhino cam you have. Uh, and finally, you have your whole operations, your drill tap bore, uh, reverse bore, and sort of four axis operations as well. Um, and these last two icons here uh, allow you to add a uh, machine operation set, which is a great way to um, sort of put your operations in folders, uh, machine control operation, uh, fixture offsets, and uh, XY instances. And we'll do probably entire tutorials on, on these operations and these options as well. Um, they're very, very handy as far as uh, setting up multiple instances of parts. And lastly, you have an operation, uh, an option to load it from a knowledge base or save it to a knowledge base. And this becomes very, very handy if you're going to be 
uh, doing the same operations on similar parts, um, but maybe the, the geometry is different. So you can load the knowledge base, uh, select your geometry on the new part, and uh, post your code, um, and it really saves a ton of time. And on your simulation tab, uh, this allows you to actually visualize and simulate uh, your machining operations before you go ahead and maybe accidentally crash your tool. Um, this allows you to fix and, and see your part machined. Um, some pretty good options as well. Along the top here, you have you can minimize your ribbon to save a little bit of more room. And you have your some options for different colors, uh, and you can set the way it's going to look. Um, I, I sort of leave it on the default for uh, Office 2010 Silver here. Um, and you can set your preferences. Under here, you can set your G-Code Editor and Analyzer, um, which basically is uh, just opens up Notepad right now. Uh, your Post Processor Generator which allows you to browse through a file and, and edit it. And we'll, uh, we'll go ahead and do an entire tutorial on setting up a post processor as well. And you can export to a VCP, VCP file. Under your preferences here, if we go into color preferences, it allows you to set your uh, region colors, your avoid regions, some surface colors, your stock color, cut stock colors, your cutting tool colors, and your toolpaths so really allows you to customize um, the way you everything will look in Rhino Cam when you're working with it. Under your user interface preferences, uh, as you can see, uh, you have floating windows for uh, dialogues. Which uh, when we start to go in and choose everything, the you'll see what I mean, uh, what it means by that, um, whether it's docked into the window or whether it's floating on top. Uh, you can set it to run an automatic check for updates at startup. Uh, you can show the getting started dialog or your configuration setup. And you can even set it to uh, invoke your stock model information or, or some other options as well here. Under machining preferences, uh, we can see that your arc output here uh, you can either output your arcs as linear segments, for instance, if the controller you're working with uh, will not handle uh, G02 or G03 motions. Uh, you can set it up to do it as a series of linear segments. Uh, you can see your spiral motions as linear segments or your helix motions as linear segments. And uh, typically only some of the newer controllers can actually do spirals or helixes, so it's, it's better off to leave that, those checked. Uh, your tool programs point is uh, where the actual tip of the tool is, and this is for uh, tools such as uh, ball mills, where uh, and you can see if I choose tool center, it moves it up to where the tool center of the uh, radius of the ball mill would be. Uh, but typically, tool tip is the uh, way everything is programmed. Toolpath generation settings, and you can have your part sampling resolution, standard, medium, or fine. And you can check a box here to generate your toolpaths in multiple threads, and we're going to leave that unchecked for right now. You can even set up a default knowledge base, which gives you the opportunity to uh, load up uh, some tools or, or knowledge base uh, options uh, will load right when you do it. And this gives you an idea of where it was located if you want to put it in there. And we're going to go ahead and check out the uh, machining preferences. I'm sorry, that's what we just did. The simulation preferences. And this is uh, important. So when you go ahead and simulate your model, um, I tend to come in here and switch it to poly polygonal model. And you can see it pops up changing simulation models when invalidate all created mo simulation models and rerun all simulations. We haven't done anything yet, so we're going to go ahead and hit yes. And your simulation accuracy, I'm going to stick it right around medium for right now. I'm going to leave everything else uh, alone. Hit OK. Uh, it lets me know to rerun the simulations to see effect, but we have nothing simulated yet. And feeds and feed speeds preferences, you can go ahead and uh, it'll tell you whether you want to load new operations from a feeds and, feed spi uh, feeds and speeds file uh, default or the tool. 
Um, and you can also use percentages to calculate uh, plunge and approach based on the actual cut feed that it creates. So we're going to leave this alone as well. And that's about it for setting up your defaults for uh, Rhino Cam. So let's go ahead and get started with loading up and writing some toolpaths. So I'm going to go ahead and go uh, import a uh, model that I created. And you can see right here that this model will go ahead and put it in uh, shaded mode. This model here is just a plate that I've created, a quarter inch plate with some pockets, uh, some holes, uh, some slots, a uh, raised boss, and a uh, big hole in the middle there. And this will give us the opportunity to play with uh, um, just some basic two axis uh, machining for right now. Um, this may represent a typical, you know, fixture plate or part that you may be creating here. So um, this is actually shown up in a layer here under solids. Uh, so let's go ahead and start creating some toolpaths. RhinoCam lets you select your edges and everything right off the solid model. So uh, with this model, there's really very little we're going to do here. So first we're going to set up and we're going to double click our post and we're going to create choose from a post processor that we're going to uh, machine this with and i personally have a, uh, a haas cnc so i'm going to go ahead and scroll down to find haas and i'm going to choose haas with cut comp and we're not in uh, millimeters so we're going to go ahead and uh, just haas with cut comp and hit ok and the first thing we want to do is create some stock for this uh, so basically what we're going to do is let's pretend that we have some three quarter inch stock and we're going to hold it, uh, hold the first quarter inch um, in a, you know, in a vise uh, on parallels and we're going to have a half inch sticking up above it. So how would we go ahead and do that? Uh, basically, let's go ahead and double click our stock and you can see it immediately updates uh, overlaying the stock over my part. So if we do copy model bounding box, uh, it, it automatically did it in this case. Um, and it's showing that it is a six inches long by four inches wide by one half inch tall. So uh, we're going to edit that and change this to 0.75. And we're going to set our corner coordinates here to zero, uh, zero, 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 which is going to give us a uh, line everything up in that bottom right, uh, bottom left corner there. So if I hit OK, um, it, go, it disappears, but we can click this little icon right here that says toggle stock visibility. And it sort of ghosted in there, and you can see um that right now the model is uh sitting below that's not exactly how uh we just mentioned it so what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and go to this align and hit align stock and this gives us some options here for z alignment and what we want is z alignment top um actually what we could do is uh only hold it by an eighth of an inch so that we can, you know, simulate some facing on that top surface as well. So let's do center, which is going to give us, uh, as you can see in the model here, uh, an eighth inch of extra stock on top and an eighth inch of extra stock on the bottom. And what we want to do for a XY alignment, uh, basically this, this showed that we made it exactly the same size, which uh, it's fine, it, it, center would work for this, but in reality, um, let's say the solid jaws of our vise is the top left, uh, we would want to go ahead and hit northwest to align it up to that corner because that's where we're going to touch off. So let's hit OK. Now, because uh, what I just mentioned, uh, what we want to do is make sure our zero point is northwest, uh, the top left, because that's our solid jaw. We're going to probe or touch off of that and then touch off the left side of the part. So uh, let's hit set up here and we're going to go ahead and set our work zero. Uh, this allows us to just pick anywhere on here if we want. 
Or what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and hit set to stock box. We're going to touch off at the bottom, let's say lowest Z. And what that allows us to do is uh, probe or touch off the bottom of the vise and add the, the height of our parallels to it. That way, if we were going to make multiple ones of these parts, uh, it, we would go ahead and no matter what varying thickness the, the stock came in, uh, we would know we're working off this uh, datum point um, that would always be the same. Uh, so lowest Z, northwest position here, which means we're going to touch off at this corner right here. And let's check this box here, output work offset uh, for G54. We're going to go ahead and hit generate. Cool. So that's our first step in setting up our stock for this part. We can go ahead and hide our stock here. So the first operation we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and face the part down to this first level here. So what I'd like to do now is we're going to go to two axis. We're going to do facing. And under drive regions, we're going to select drive containment regions. And I'm going to go ahead and pick this edge. And you can see it highlights it in yellow. We're going to right click. And as you can see, that it's going to turn drive region on in here. And we're going to go over to tool. We have no tools. So let's go ahead and create a tool. And this nice little dialog box comes up where we can create a tool. And we have the options in facing for ball mill, flat mill, corner radius, V mill, chamfer mill. Taper mill, face mill, dovetail mill, fillet mill, or lollipop mill, or even a custom user defined, which you can do from a uh, curve in Rhino. Uh, we're just going to do a standard end mill here. Uh, we're going to give it a diameter of one inch, and we're going to make it uh, a two inch flute length. And the rest of the stuff, if you really want to get specific with it, you can go ahead and uh, it's all only for simulation. Uh, under properties here, it's going to be a carbide end mill. It's going to be a four flute end mill. It's going to be tool number one, and our adjust and our cut com register is going to be one as well. Uh, we're going to go ahead and turn on flood coolant, and we're going to give it a name of one inch end mill. And I'm going to go ahead and take this and copy it into the comments. What we're going to do is go ahead and go into feeds and speeds. And it has some sort of uh, default uh, values in here. I'm going to hit load from file. And so let's say we're going to be machining 6061 aluminum. So we're going to choose 6061 for our stock. The tool material is already in there. It auto generates the surface speed. The feed per tooth comes up as four thousandths right away. Uh, our tool diameter is in there. Our number of flutes didn't get did not get updated, so we're going to change that to four. And we're going to go ahead and because I think that's a little fast for this, let's drop it down to a thousand surface feet per minute. Gives us a calc auto calculates a spindle speed of seventy six thirty nine. And we're going to leave the feed per tooth alone. And that gives us a cut feed of 122 inches per minute. So let's hit OK. And you can see that the percentages that we talked about earlier uh, automatically updated through your plunge and your approach and your engage. So we're going to hit Save Edits to Tool. I'm sorry, Save as New Tool. And that's going to give us our one inch end mill here. We're going to hit OK. It's our only tool in here to select from. Feeds and speeds are already in here, loaded up, ready to go. Under clearance plane, clearance plane is going to give us a uh, where the tool is going to lift up and uh, for transfer and for moving. So right now, as you can see, it's above the part. Uh, for this part, we're going to leave this alone since we're going to do this in a vise. In future tutorials, uh, we'll get into actually modeling clamps and uh, setting our clearance planes and our cut transfers uh, to really uh, be able to control where the tool is going to go and the height it's going to do between moving around. Uh, we're going to skip over here to roughing. This is where we get into the nitty-gritty of the facing operation. 
Um, for facing, we can leave the tolerance at 10 thou, uh, stock of 25 thou, which as you can see on the right by this little diagram, that's the amount of extra material uh, it's going to leave. And we're going to look down and we're going to leave this as mixed. And our step over distance, we're going to change this to 50%. We're going to skip over to cut levels. Now, <clears throat> what we did is we chose the, uh, the curve that is already down about halfway down through the part. Now, we know that our part is... Uh, three quarters of an inch thick. However, we have an eighth of an inch into the vise, leaving us um, essentially five eighths of an inch above. So we're going to face this down only an eighth of an inch right now. Um, a really cool feature of uh, Rhino Cam is being able to pick your top. So we're going to hit pick top here. And I can actually go and pick uh, somewhere on the part, but what we're going to do is we're going to enter it because we know that the part above zero mark is going to be uh, 5 eighths. We're going to enter it in at 0 0.625. And we're going to set our total cut depth of 125. And we're going to do this in two passes. So we're going to put this down to 0.625 rup rough depth per cut and you can actually change this around this is where you would control if you want a finish pass um, really to get a better finish and take off like 10 thou at the end there but we're going to leave this alone for now our entry and our exit uh, because we're going to face let's go ahead and do a 2d entry and a 2d exit and the cut box at the bottom actually will allow us to do it uh, in both levels. So we're going to turn that on. Advanced cut parameters uh, gives us the option to corner round. Uh, and you can see a little diagram on the right here. Uh, down in the middle, you can see cut arc fitting. And I turn this on, especially um, in this, it's really not big of a deal because we're just facing the part. Um, however, I changed the tolerance to uh, two thousandths. And I turn on smooth cut connectors. If we go ahead and hit generate, we could see that the tool path here, uh, it generated a tool path. So if we look, uh, we actually made a mistake here. So it looks like it's going to drive right down through our part. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and fix this uh, because we know that our part is a half inch plus an eighth, which, which should be five eighths. Um, it looks like it, it's going to cut right through it. So if we double click to go back into two and a half axis facing and go to our cut levels here, we can see that our part, uh, if we go ahead and pick this and change this to 0.75 and hit generate and look at it from the side, now... Now that's what we want it to look like, which what is uh, three quarters of an inch as our top and facing it down an eighth of an inch here. So if we go ahead and hit simulate, it blanks out our solid. And if we hit play, moves a little bit, a little fast here, but you can see, let's slow it way down and do that again. You can see it's going back and forth, and it'll demonstrate how it's facing that. You can see there, you can turn off your tool path right there and get a good look that it just faced that down. So next, what we're going to do is we're going to face down the remainder of the height. So let's go back to program, and you can see that uh, we need to face the rest of this area down around to finish this part. So what we're going to do again, and let's go ahead and just copy this. Uh, right click, copy, right click, paste. And what we're going to do is double click it. And now our drive region, we're going to go ahead and add another edge to it. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and pick this outer edge. 
but we're also going to pick this inner edge and we need to select it to create a full chain as you can see I'm going to right click it shows the regions and if we go to cut levels now we're going to leave our top at uh, we can actually bring our top down to 0.625 and our cut depth now is going to be 0.25 or a quarter inch. And we're going to leave our rough depth per cut at a 16th. And let's go ahead and generate. If we turn on our toolpath visibility, you can see it comes in and it's machining all around this, even with the same one inch tool. Let's see how that's going to look here. So simulate. And we can see it's going back and forth and cleaning up. That whole operation. And that looks pretty good. The only thing is if we go back into our two and a half axis facing and look at our roughing, it's actually leaving 25 thousandths of stock uh, on that center as well. So what we're going to have to do is uh, we can come in here and just change this to zero and let's tighten up our tolerance to one thousandth and generate and you can see it changed the tool paths up a little bit. Uh, so let's simulate. And it's basically doing the same thing, except it's going to finish uh, that center part to the exact size that we want it. And that's it. So now it's starting to look a little bit like the part we want. So let's go back to program. So next, let's go ahead and uh, pocket these two outside things. So let's go to two axis pocketing and select our drive containment. And we're going to select the top of those. And right click. And we see have our two drive regions. And our tool in here. Let's go ahead now and create a new tool for it. And we'll leave our end mill here. But let's go ahead and create a quarter inch tool for it. So let's put in 0.25. Automatically change the shank diameter. Let's change our flute length to three quarters and our overall tool length is probably only going to be one and a half inches here so let's change this to quarter and mil and we're going to copy this over to our comments and this is going to be tool number two and again it'll be a four flute tool under feeds and speeds let's load from file change this to a thousand and most likely a quarter inch tool, we can change this down to two and a half thou feet per tooth. And this gives us a spindle speed of 38.19 and a cut feed of 38 inches per minute, which is fine for this. Let's hit OK. We're going to save as new tool. It shows up in our tools. Hit OK. And as you can see in the bottom left here, they're showing up in our tool browser. Feeds and speed should already be selected. Clearance plane is going to be the same. Cut parameters. So now, what we're going to do here is we're going to up our tolerance to that one thousandth of an inch. And I think I only want to leave 10 thou of stock so we can go in and clean that up afterwards. Uh, we're going to leave our cut pattern on offset. But if you take a look, we have the option to do offset spiral, linear, circular spiral or radial, uh, which all may be beneficial based on the type of machining you need to do. So we're going to leave it on offset. Tool diameter, I'm going to change this up to 50%. Our cut levels now, what we're going to do is we're going to leave our location of cut geometry at top because I picked the very top of that pocket. And I know these pockets are an eighth inch deep. So we're going to make it an eighth inch total cut depth. And because it's a quarter inch bit, we're going to do it in four passes or 25 thou. Um, we can do 25 thou per pass or 37 and a half. So we'll do 37 and a half. Uh, 
go over to entry exit here and our approach, we can approach in and it gives you an idea of this. Uh, we're going to helix in because I think that's better on the tool. And we're going to go ahead and hit apply entry exit at all cut levels. Our advanced cut parameters, we're going to turn on our arc fitting, set this to two thousandths and turn our smooth cut connectors on. Under the sorting tab, we're going to leave this alone for now. If we had a bunch of holes, uh, we can set this up and we'll show you the sorting when we go to do our outer holes here. So let's hit generate. Turn on our toolpath. If we zoom in, we can see that it's showing our toolpath to pocket these out. Let's go ahead and simulate this to see what it's going to look like. Our tool's going in pockets that right out. As you can see by this red line here, uh, that's our rapid. That's where that clearance plane really comes into play. Uh, it's pulling up the tool high enough not to hit this center island here. So the next thing I think we're going to do is go ahead and profile these to clean them up. So since we're going to be using the same uh, geometry, we're going to do two axis profiling. Select our geometry. We're going to pick the same two curves. Right click. Tool, we're going to use the same tool. Feeds and speeds are going to be the same. Clearance plane will be the same. Now, cut parameters are set to 1,000th and zero stock. And we're going to go ahead and check this box. Use outside, inside for closed curves in an inside. Our cut levels are going to be at top. And our total cut depth is going to be an eighth of an inch but we're going to do it all in one. Our entry exit, we're going to do 2D. Our advanced cut parameters, we're going to turn on arc fitting and set this to 2000s. And the rest of them we don't, we're not uh, using right now. And we're going to hit generate. Now, let's take a look here and we can see that there's no real exit. We only have this entry. And why this is, is that our, cur our curved seam is right there. So we're going to go ahead and come to Rhino and select our 2.5 axis profiling, which shows these. And we're going to run the curve seam command. All right. So one thing you need to know here is that because we're working with edges on a solid, we don't really have an option to uh, control the curve seam here. So uh, just as a sidebar here, what we could do is go ahead and duplicate the edge using the duplicate edge command, dupe edge. And we're going to select that same two edges. Right click and now we have curves. So if we go back into our profile, remove these regions and select them. If we click over here, we now have an option between the poly surface edge or the curve we just created. And we're going to do the same on both. We're going to select the curve instead. Right click, generate. And you can see that we have an entry over here, but not really anything here. So now if we run the curve seam, we can actually adjust this point by clicking and bringing it over. Let's bring it to the middle on both. Right click. We're going to come over here, right click and regenerate. Now we have a nice entry and exit on both pocketing. <clears throat> so let's go ahead and simulate. And you can see that that went in. Uh, it looked like it actually selected the uh, uh, quarter inch tool for us, so we hit generate. Let's simulate that again. And actually, the funny thing is, this is running a little fast for me. So let's go ahead and come to our uh, simulation preferences. And this maximum display interval, number of motions per distance, let's put a point in front of there and hit OK. Now if we do it, 
See how much slower that it is. It shows us exactly what it's doing. And that's how you can control your speed of your simulation. And we can actually use this slider over here to turn it up uh, if we wanted it to run a little faster again, just like that. So, all right, back to program. Let's go ahead and cut these two outer slots out. So what we're going to do is we're going to cut these out. Uh, we're going to pocket them. And this time we're not going to profile them afterwards. We're just going to pocket them to zero stock. So if we go to pocketing, select, and let's go ahead and select the bottom this time. So we can select that edge and that edge. Right click. Tool, we're going to use a quarter inch end mill. Feeds and speeds are going to be loaded from the tool. Clearance plane is going to be the same. Our cut parameters now. Let's go ahead and change our tolerance to one-tenth. Or I'm sorry, one-thousandth. We're going to change our stock to zero. We're going to set our tool to leave our tool diameter alone. And our cut levels, let's do this. Let's go ahead and do choose at bottom. So we know that's at the bottom. However, if we want this to go, uh, do we, we don't need this to go all the way through because we're going to have some stock left over being held by the vise. So well, we can leave this alone uh, and just say at bottom. Our total cut depth, let's click this little arrow here, which gives us a chance to select it on the model. And what it's going to do is we can use our O snaps to go ahead and grab this and draw a line from there to there. And it automatically set it to a quarter inch. And what we're going to do is we're going to do this in 75 thousandths per cut. Our entry, let's go back to using a helix. And we're going to set it at owl levels. Set our arc fitting to two thousandths. Smooth cut connectors on and hit generate. And it computes the toolpath, and we can see it's creating a nice little helix to get started, and it pockets both those out. Let's go ahead and check the simulation. So as you can see, it defaulted to sticking this at the top, which is why it looks weird. So let's go ahead and drag this to the bottom. And the reason for that was I didn't click this one first before I went ahead and uh, did that. So let's regenerate and re-simulate it. You can see that looks much better. And it even leaving clearance to come up over this island here. So cool. Let's go back to program. So what's left? We need to have our outer holes and this big center hole. So this, let's do this big center hole. We're going to use a brand new feature in RhinoCam 2015 to take care of that. Under holes, we have our options to drill, to tap it, to bore it. Um, what we're actually going to do in this is we're going to use uh, under two axis called hole profiling. Now, hole pocketing has been around for a while. It's basically allows us to select a point or, or an arc or a curve, give it a diameter, and actually cut that out. Uh, we could certainly select the curve and just do our standard pocketing or our standard profiling, but I want to show you some of the options in hole profiling as well. So with our operations selected down here, two axis, hole profiling, our drive region is going to be this circle arc in the center. Right click. Our tool is going to be this quarter inch end mill. Feeds and speeds are going to be the same. Clearance is going to be the same. Now in cut parameters, we have global tolerance this is a thousandth. Our location of the cut geometry is at top, which is right. And our whole depth now, we can go ahead and click this little arrow and click the two points. That gives us a half inch. And this whole diameter here uh, allows us to go ahead and 
give it any diameter we want. Or this nice little checkbox here for arcs, use arc diameter. So we're going to leave that checked and it's going to use the drawings arc already. And our helix pitch is going to essentially drive it in a helix all the way down and cut it out like a slug. Under entry exit, we show 2D or uh, exit. We're going to go ahead and change this to a long path 3D entry. And we're going to change our exit to none. And let's see how that looks. Generate. As you can see, it gets started right into the work. And then it basically spirals its way down. And at the very bottom, it does a nice little cleanup pass. Let's go ahead and take a look at that in the simulation. And you can see that it leaves it uh, right, you know, leaves the big chunk in the center. This is helpful uh, to, you know, prevent tool wear and everything. And the slug would drop right out if we didn't have this extra stock being held on to by the vise, which is cool for us for right now. Let's go back to program and finish this off. Lastly, what we're going to do is we're going to take care of these four holes. So let's go ahead and go into holes and we're just going to drill these. Let's make, let's say we're going to spot them first. So let's select our drill points. And I'm going to select these holes. Right click. Tool. Let's go ahead and create and use a center drill. And let's just leave this at all the defaults for, for right now. Feeds and speeds, load from file. Change this to be consistent with our surface speed. And change this down to two thousandths. Hit OK. Let's change this to just spot drill. Save as a new tool. Hit OK. Feeds and speeds are already loaded. Clearance plane's good to go. And our cut parameters, what we're going to do is we just want to spot this uh, slightly here. So let's, we can actually go in and do countersink drill, but just for uh, the sake of getting through this tutorial fast, we're going to spot 100 thou down and uh, go ahead and change our sorting to minimum distance sort so you can kind of see what that looks like. If we hit generate, you could see that it's spotting. Uh, looking like way too deep in there. So what we're going to do is we're going to have to double check that. But as you can see, the minimum distance sort causes it to go around the part uh, in a direction like so. Let's go back into here, check our cut parameters. Um, and our location of our drill points are set to at top, uh, which is correct. Uh, everything looks correct, so let's go ahead and uh, simulate and see what it looks like. I guess just a hundred thousand a little deep for it. Let's go back in and change our cut parameters. Let's just spot it to twenty five thou. You can see that's quite quite a bit shorter if we simulate. And nice little spot on there. What we're going to do is go ahead and drill it to size. I go into holes, drill. And actually, even faster, we can just copy, paste. Come in here, everything's already selected. Create a new tool. And we're going to have a drill. And we're going to drill it with a quarter inch drill. And two flutes, feeds and speeds, load from file. Our surface speed is already in there. Uh, let's drop this down to 750.
feed per tooth. One and a half thou. Hit OK. Quarter inch drill. Save as a new tool. Hit OK. Feeds and speeds. We hit load from tool and it loads up. Clearance plane is good. Cut parameters. We're still at top. This time let's click our handy dandy arrow. Hit there and hit there. And that shows that we're drilling uh, 25 thou. But what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and hit add tool tip to drill depth, which means it's going to add a little bit of drill depth to make sure that the bottom of the hole is fully to depth and takes care of the tool. And sorting, it's going to leave it at minimum distance sort. We're going to go ahead and hit generate. So if we simulate, And you can see they're not all the way through because we have the stock at the very bottom. And basically, this is our entire part. The last step we would do for this is to go ahead and flip it over in our vise and just create a uh, profiling to cut it all the way out. Um, we can demonstrate that the part is here uh, basically by taking this outer shape and profiling that. If we come in and do two axis profile, we're going to select this outer one, quarter inch, feeds and speeds, leave everything alone, our cut levels at top, pick our depth, quarter inch, 2D, set our arc fitting, and generate. And lo and behold, it picked the inside because I skipped over that a little too fast. Let's jump back in here. Cut parameters, outside, inside curves. We're going to pick outside, generate. And you can see it does a nice curve in one step here. Um, however, that might be a little much. Let's go back in, cut parameters, cut levels. Let's change this so it does it in 50 thousandths increments. Generate. You can see it creates nice step downs on them. Let's simulate. And you can see it really isn't taking much material off at all except for those corners, which probably could have done it in one step. Let's speed it up. And you can see if we turn off this, the vise would be holding this last eighth of an inch. You would flip the part and just face off that end. And with that, your slots would show through, your holes would show through, and your slug would drop out. Uh, that's basically it for basic Rhino cam machining. We can get into a little bit more uh, into some future tutorials. Um, I think this gives everybody a pretty good grasp of just creating simple tool paths to generate a part. Um, one other thing that's kind of cool is there's this button over here, Material Texture Visibility. If you click this, it's going to give you a simulation and sort of give you an idea of uh, what it may look like uh, based on the type of material you picked when setting up. Um, now, this could be a little taxing on your video card, so I rarely use it or turn it on. Um, I do mostly everything in the simulation to check my work. Um, as you can see, this is very nice and smooth, very good representation of the machining part. Uh, just for uh, demonstration purposes, I want to show you the other model. Uh, we're going to switch over to Voxel. Hit OK. And we're going to rerun them all. So I'm going to click the bottom and hit two. I'm going to select them all and hit two end, and it's going to jump through them all. And as you can see, it's a little rough around the edges. It just it's not a, as nice of a model. However, everything generates and moves a lot faster. It's less taxing on your video card hardware and your CPU. Um, I have a very good computer here for CAD, so. 
I'm going to go ahead and leave it in polygonal model. And again, I got to rerun everything. Select them all to end. As you can see, it takes a little bit longer, but looks way, way nicer. So I hope this is a big help for everybody. And uh, I will continue to go into more in depth for Rhino Cam, including uh, starting from scratch and actually drawing a part um, in taking into consideration how we're going to machine it um, and getting it ready for uh, posting this out. This part, uh, if we were going to go ahead and post it, uh, we could go ahead and click our setup, just right click and hit post, and it's going to ask for us to save it somewhere. So let's just throw it on the desktop and give it a name. Uh, Rhino Cam Part dot NC, hit post, and it's going to automatically open up Notepad to edit it. And as you can see, uh, the comments are in the parentheses, uh, along with the comments of what it's doing, uh, the comments of the operation, and even the comments of the tool that it loaded. And that's why I like to put those comments in there. These names can be changed as well just by double clicking or clicking once and then clicking again. Um, I like to keep them named properly. Uh, in this tutorial, we didn't really name them, but uh, in very, very long programs, it's good to have them named so you can kind of follow through if you have to just change one thing in the code without coming back into the program and regenerating. Um, I hope this works for everybody. And uh, in the future, we're going to go over uh, some other uh, two-axis operations, maybe some thread milling. Uh, the three-axis operations are very cool. Um, if we had some wavy uh, portions to this part, we would do some horizontal roughing and some parallel finishing. Um, and we'll even get into some four-axis operations. Uh, ideally, we're going to go ahead and manufacture and machine some of the products we do in these tutorials so that you can actually see um, it go all the way in the full life cycle start to finish. So once again, hope you guys like this. Uh, subscribe for more videos and uh, see you guys in the next tutorial. Thanks.